Good morning, and welcome to St. Jude's Metropolitan Community Church as we gather in body and spirit to worship our God. Whether you have worshiped with us before or this is your first time joining, we want to welcome you and let you know that all of the information you need to follow along can be found in the comments section below this video. There is a link to the order of worship for this service and our email and phone number. And we ask that you feel free to contact us for we would like to connect with you in conversation, in prayer, and in support for one another. Everyone may, may participate in the blessing and receiving of Holy Communion by having either, both, either or both some bread and juice available to be held up and blessed during our sacramental liturgy. You may then feed yourself and those with you by saying, this is the body of Christ, or this is the bread of life, whichever you prefer. Also in the information below and on the order of worship is a link to our online giving application. We ask for your continued support, for even during this time of extended separation, all of our ministries continue to function. And I want to continue to thank all of our volunteers and our staff who continue to show up and carry on our mission. I also want to give uh, another update on our uh, ability to live stream on Sunday morning. If you are watching this video, this was being recorded on Saturday, which allows you the opportunity to watch it any time on Sunday or, or thereafter. And in the next couple of weeks, we will be moving to a Sunday morning service and live broadcasting that over the internet on both Facebook and YouTube. And that will be at 10 o'clock in the morning, the time we used to gather in person for worship. So let us all continue to prepare for that shared experience uh, in a couple of weeks. And now let us prepare ourselves for worship by taking a moment to quiet ourselves, and that time will be followed by our call to worship. day to worship our God and to be brought together as one body, one mind, and one spirit. Unite, Unite us together, together, dear God, that we, we may see you face to face in this place, in this world today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now if you would help me sing our opening hymn, We Shall Behold Him.
come to worship you in all the places that our hearts reside, seeking to draw nearer to you, to know your presence in our lives today. Open our ears and our eyes and our hearts so we may know you deeply, intimately, lovingly. Through our worship, may we find a home for the unlimited power in your Son and in your Spirit. And it is in the name of your Son that we pray today. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <clears throat> our first reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient. <clears throat> Love is kind does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes always preserves, for love never fails. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. to the church. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you, O God. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up high on a mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And so Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is our gospel of hope. Praise, Praise to you, Creator, Christ, Christ and Holy, Holy Spirit.
Oh God, we thank you for calling us to this moment in time. Time that is not limited to our understanding, but belonging to your infinite love. Allow me to speak this day for you, dear Lord, guiding and directing my words even as they form in my mouth. Encourage us to go beyond mere words and allow ourselves to, be, to become united with you. May it be your voice we hear speaking sweetly and tenderly in our ear. For this we pray in the most holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes I just want it all to stop. Talk of COVID, protests, looting, brutality. I feel like I am losing my way and becoming convinced that this new normal will be our forever reality. But then this past week, I met an 87-year-old who talked about living through polio and diphtheria, World War II and the Cold War, Vietnam protests, <coughs> the assassinations of Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy, AIDS, and 15 different presidents. So he seemed quite surprised when I said to him that 2020 must be especially challenging for him. And he looked up at my face and said, no, not really, for I learned a long time ago not to look at the world through headlines. Rather, I see the world through the people that surround me. I see the world with the realization that we need to love big. Therefore, I choose to write my own headlines, like, Somebody Loved Somebody Today child visited a grandparent today, or a grandparent took care of a child today. And then looking up to my face and tapping my hand, he said, old man makes new friend today. And his words collided with all of my worries, freeing them from the grip that was holding me so tight. And I was left with a renewed spirit so that my headline now reads, <clears throat> Preacher Overwhelmed by the Spirit of Kindness and the Reminder that Our Capacity to Love is Big. Now, I wish that had actually happened to me this week, but it's just a story I came across and made it mine because it resonated with me. Because I think, like a lot of us, I am beginning to feel the strain of the problems of this year. And I am worried, because I do think our capacity to love may be dwindling. And the reason I think that is because we can no longer see one another face to face. We can no longer look into the eyes of one another, eyes that reveal our suffering past, past the masks that we wear. And I think that is the greatest tragedy of all of this, that we have begun to see shadows of one another distorted pictures of ourselves that are easy to group together and label. Over there is one group of people, not individuals anymore, but a whole group of people who are of a certain age or a certain ethnic or cultural background 
who are collectively now all unsafe, sickly, people to avoid, all of them. We see all police as monsters because of the brutality of some. We see all protesters as anarchists because of the violence of some. We see all the unemployed as freeloaders. And we see people becoming game pieces played by politicians in their game rooms, while corporations receive sympathy and are saved one by one. We see all people who disagree with us on any subject not worthy of being included in our lives anymore as part of the unlovable group of people that now inhabit the earth. And we become overwhelmed with this. How can we not? And we become angry because we think it is everybody else in the world that is causing our hearts to harden. And that we can only remain sane if we become self-righteous in our anger. All of that is now worrying me a lot. Because I'm not immune to any of this either. But then I read that little story about an old man who knew that his capacity to love is always greater than the breaking news <clears throat> that is constantly breaking over us. And I thought, well, we can do that. If we can accept a new normal that limits our face-to-face -face interactions, then we can create a new normal that preserves our love for one another. Because we're not helpless in all of this, even though that feeling may be quite strong right now. It's simply a question of which message is going to direct our lives. A message of fear, impatience, avoidance, and self-righteous anger? Or a message of love? Love that is patient. Love that is kind. Love that is not easily angered. Love that delights, protects, preserves, and always hopes. You know, most of the time we hear love described that way, we're probably attending a wedding. And when I perform a wedding, I ask the couple to turn and look at one another, to look into each other's eyes to see the patience and the kindness that they fell in love with. And then I tell them, you know, the hardest thing you are ever going to do is listen to these words today and then try to live them out tomorrow and every tomorrow thereafter. So I tell them to look really hard. So they will always remember seeing the love and the Spirit of God that, was, that is within each of them, staring right back at the other. <clears throat> because if they can always remember seeing that love in the other, then the rest of the promises become easy to love in sickness and health in good times and bad, till death do us part. I think we should read those words about love more than just at weddings. Because you do not have to get married to see that same spirit of love in others. And I've noticed that it's a funny thing, or maybe I should say it's a holy thing. That there is a glow about people who can do this. 
love others through all things. Newlyweds glow because they just did it. But you and I can grow with this love, glow with this love as well. It's not really that difficult. When Jesus went up on Mount Tabor to pray, he was suddenly transformed into something beautiful. That the best way to describe it is that the pure love of God was shining through him, glowing all around him. A love and a glow that was always there, never hidden, but that the disciples had a hard time seeing until they were, were reminded of why they fell in love with Jesus in the first place. For it was not because he told them all to, to go leave their jobs now and, and leave your families. You don't really get up and go and follow someone if that's your only message. Nor was it actually because of all the miracles. You know, sometimes we forget that there were other people doing miracle-looking things, too, during Jesus' time. He had some competition on that front. They followed him because of the love that was inside of him, permeating his whole life, flowing out of him so that it changed the lives of others. That's what attracted them to him. And when they met him, they simply knew that that love would never leave them. That that love would never turn away from them, never reclassify them as unlovable one day. And that even death would not stop that love from being with them. That even though there would come a time when they could not see him, face to face anymore, that love would continue to grow inside of them. In the gospel reading, the story ends with a, a booming voice coming from a cloud saying, this is my son, listen to him. Remember how he shined with my love and be like him. And so they did. And against what would appear to be all odds, 2,020 years have gone by since then. And the world is still here. And the love of God, well, that's still here too, shining just as brightly as it did that day on the mountain. The world is certainly trying to tarnish it again, but we don't have to let it. Because we have the ability to remember, to remember the shining light of God's love we used to see in every person that gathered here, falling upon everyone that came in here, how each face glowed every time we met face to face. It may be a few more weeks or even months before we can all see each other face to face again. But we don't have to forget the love that we share. Because true love can see through these walls and see right into our hearts. And true love does not dwindle. And it certainly does not die. And it does not distort the other into something we cannot recognize. When we open these eyes and allow the buildup of scales to fall to the ground, then it will be the love in our hearts that will remind us just how precious we are to one another. And we will know that our capacity to love is indeed greater than anything
this world can throw at us. And our old friends that may be coming dim in our eyes might just become that new friend we need to meet again today. Let us pray that the love of God continue to shine upon each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Holy God, grant us a love that is patient and kind. Refresh our hearts that we may always see the shining glory of your love in each other. Help us to walk the path that Jesus shows us. For it is the path of compassion, love, and understanding. In these times of shared suffering, stay with us on our journey, a journey that begins and ends with you. God, knowing that you are present with each and every one of us at this very moment, hear our prayers as we lift them to you. Prayers for the sick. Prayers for the lonely. Prayers for the shunned and those left behind. Prayers for those we love and prayers for those for whom our love has dwindled. Gather us in your strong and gentle arms. Bring us to your altar of love and give us rest, peace, wholeness, and unity. It is these things that we pray for today. In the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now, my friends, let us take a moment of silence and allow these words to enter our hearts. traditional time in our service to receive our offerings for our church and our community, <clears throat> and I ask that you continue to support our mission.
me now, please, in our prayer of confession. Holy God, we offer ourselves to, do, to you to do with us what thy will. Instill in our hearts your peace and your love. May we seek your face in the eyes of our world today. Help us, dear Lord, to overcome all obstacles that prevent us from loving you. Help us to love others as you love us. Help us to see your love in those you place before us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So let us join with that heavenly choir of angels in that unending hymn of praise, <coughs> saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, blessed is the one who came down to earth so that we all may know the wonder of God's love. And so with thanks and praise, let us proclaim once more what is the mysterious and miraculous truth of our faith. That Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is here. And Christ shall come again. And now let us all pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, at this table you, go, you so graciously feed us with bread of life and the eternal cup of salvation. May we who raise these gifts to you be strengthened in your love. And may we who have seen the power of your love in our lives see you face to face when we look upon your people. God, it is in memory of Christ's death and resurrection that we offer these gifts to you and ask that you turn these simple elements of your creation into our spiritual nourishment once more. Bless this table and all the tables around which we gather this day. A table given to us by your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit as we feed ourselves on your love. Amen. Jesus was betrayed, he shared a meal, and during it he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body offered for you, and as you do this, remember me, and I shall
every single metropolitan community church around the entire world, we celebrate an open communion table. For we know that there are no words we could ever say or barriers we could ever erect to prevent anyone from receiving these gifts now blessed by, by God for all people everywhere. And therefore, let us now all share in this holy communion meal together. In the midst of his children, the Lord said he would be. It does not take very many. It may only be just two or three. And I know that same sweet spirit that we felt all times before. And I can say without a
together in your presence this day. Thank you for assuring us of your love and that we are all members of one body through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And now if you would help me sing our closing song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Amen. Amen. Amen.